Hello friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Laura and this week we're going to talk a little bit about, a lot of it, about my bullet journal. Am I happy that Y2K fashion is coming back? Absolutely. Am I too old to wear it now? Probably. Do I care though? No, not really. A few vlogs ago, I did a Sunday reset, and in that Sunday reset, I did my bullet journal for the week. And I got a comment asking if I could show kind of my bullet journal process. The comment was from my mom, and I'm still gonna do it. So, um, because I love bullet journal videos and going on with the trend of making videos that I love to watch, that's what I'm gonna do. So, first I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my bullet journal and then I will pass it off to voiceover Laura and we'll do a little like I'll show you my setup for me. So let me show you kind of my process. There is like a half a shelf back here in my bookshelf of just journals <laughs> and not like like bullet journals. I started bullet journaling when I started the job I'm at now which it's been about three and a half years. It's mainly for work and then somewhat recently ish I started doing it for my personal life as well and I love it. I love it. I love it and I love watching bullet journal videos. So I watch Amanda Rach Lee and Planning with Kay. I'll put both of their channels down below. And I like them both because they are both very different types of bullet journalers. Amanda Rach Lee is a wonderful artist. Actually, they're both wonderful artists. Amanda Rach Lee does a lot of doodles in her bullet journal. She does themes every year. They both do themes every month. Amanda doodles like right there in her journal. Planning with Kay does themes. She's an amazing artist. She draws and all that. She draws out like her little decorations as stickers and then she puts those in her journal and she also like she sells the stickers and all that kind of stuff too. So just kind of a different approach using the stickers versus just drawing straight in her journal but she does create the stickers herself but it kind of helps you can create the journal that looks like hers. Now for me <laughs> I watch these because I like to see what layouts they use and how it helped them with their bullet drilling process. I am no artist and I cannot draw very well. I do like to doodle, but um, so you'll see like little doodles here and there in my journals. It's taken me a really long time to kind of figure out my process and it's still ever evolving and ever changing. Last year, actually, I used, Amanda Rachel Lee came out with a planner. This is the full year of 2021 and it's all preset for you. This is what like the habit tracker and the mood tracker looks like. And then there's also goals and favorites. There's also a blank page. There's a couple blank pages in here. So I usually filled my blank page out with my grateful list. There's another month's. I actually really fell in love with the layout that she did. Um, so she starts off with the month and then like the full month. And then she does the habit tracker, mood tracker, and then she does the goals and favorites and you can fill out what the favorites are I usually do books audiobooks youtube and tv now i think i do books podcast youtube and tv and i mostly just we'll get there but mostly i just list what i'm watching at the time or listening to or reading at the time and then grateful there's the blank page here i'll show like this this half here there's not much on this one so there's like little block boxes of each day and so you can write down e either your schedule your to-do list whatever you want in each day and then there's oh wait here we go here's kind of a blank one here this is when we went to yosemite there's all that stuff and then there's usually like a title page and she so this is kind of an example of amanda rachley's these actually all came from past spreads that she did so um it's drawn in and you just color it which was really nice <laughs> so i actually really enjoyed the layout of this and i've carried it over to my bullet journal so this is april's Get it? April shower, spring my flowers. This is where the idea for the spreads I am currently using are. Without further ado, I will stop talking and pass you over to Voice Over Laura and I will show you how I set up my bullet journal. So we'll see you there. This is the journal I use. It's a minimalism art dotted journal and I got it from Amazon. I use a couple different types of pens. My fine liners are these AI Nate Bach fine liner pens that I also got from Amazon. They are really nice and super fine. 
And then I also have these Papermate Flare bold markers that I got actually from work. And they have this really cool rounded tip to them, which makes them really fun to use. Wow, that's... Yep, I love pens. <laughs> I also use these highlighters from Staples. They're just the Staples generic brand True Red. I just really like them. They're super bright. Oh, and I wanted to show you my little pen holder. It's a little jack-o'-lantern. It's super cute. I think Cameron got it at a thrift store. So now it's time to get into my journal and I'll show you what I got. So when you first open it up, it's just 2022. It's some yearly spreads that I don't use. I made them and I just didn't really go back to them. I don't know. I use that YouTube one monthly. This is my future log. It's just future dates. And then my gift list and my wish list. Gift list is if I see anything for anybody that I want to get, I just put it there. Wish list is things that I want, but um, there's obviously not much there either. But I wanted to show you what my reading journal is when I'm reading in 2022. So the first spread in my reading journal is my book shelf, bookcase kind of thing. As I finish a book, I will add it to my bookcase. I'm actually two books behind on there. I've got to add the last two books I read on there. But it's got some fun, cute decorations. It's got my cat, it's got my Marnie necklace and a candle. And I do color code it by genre. I have mystery, fantasy, romance, young adult, and I will add genres as I need. I'm actually reading a horror book right now, so I gotta add that. This is my daily reading challenge. I fill in the boxes as I read each day. So the highlighted boxes are the, one, are the days that I have read. The lines here are the days that I did not read. As you can see, I am a mood reader. So if I stop reading, then I really stop reading and I kind of get blocked. So I think it'll look really cool by the end of the year when the whole thing's filled out. And yes, my reading journal is just different ways to organize the same information. I, I don't know, I just love organizing it in different ways, but these are my reading stats. So as I finish a book, I will add it to, add the stats to this uh, spread and hopefully by the end of the year, it'll all be filled out. But for the categories, I have title, author, dates that I read it, my rating and the format. So whether it was a physical book or an audiobook. This is my Goodreads challenge that I do track in the Goodreads app, but I also just kind of wanted to put it into my journal here. It looks kind of like a game board and I want to read 30 books by the end of the year and I color code it by format, so physical or audiobook. And then on the other side, I have my favorite quotes from the books that I read this year. I have 12 boxes. My original plan was to do a quote a month, but currently I'm just kind of adding to it as I see quotes. My favorite one so far is when fear arrives, something is about to happen. It's from Crooked Kingdom. The final spread in my reading journal is the best of 2022. It's a bracket for my favorite book of the year. I randomized the months on the left-hand side and I put my favorite book of that month in the box and then I will fill out the bracket and figure out what my favorite book was this year. And maybe I'll do a video at the end of the year where I fill out the rest of the bracket. So that is it for my reading journal. The rest of my journal is all monthly and weekly spreads, which we're going to fill out now for May. I always start off my monthly spreads with a full like month overview. So I have a month calendar that I'm going to fill out and draw out for you now. Uh, the way I do it is I do a big box of seven across and five down. Each box is five by six. So there are five boxes up and down and six across. And so that's kind of the size of my calendar. And like I said, I fill out the whole thing and then I will erase it, which I think I'm gonna start doing now, yep. I will erase kind of the shape of the actual calendar of the month. So May starts on a Sunday and ends on a Tuesday. So that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's the last day of the month. 
So what I'm going to do is just erase the rest of the boxes so that it's the shape of May. So now we are going to fill it in with some color. This is obviously my favorite part and no, I do not use a ruler. So my lines will not be close to straight. Sorry if that bothers anybody, but I don't have time for rulers and I don't mind the organic shape of the lines. So this month, since we are going to Disney World and it is the 50th anniversary of Disney and, or Disney World, and the colors of the event, the 50th anniversary that they are, that they have are purple, like a light blue, a teal, and a pink, I think. I don't know, that kind of color palette. So that's the color palette I'm going to use for the month of May. Plus they're very nice little springy colors. What I'm doing now is outlining the calendar in purple. And then I'm going to kind of fill in the Mickeys that you can see outlined around the page and um, kind of fill it in with some Mickeys and some confetti for the 50th anniversary because again, we are going to Disney World this month. So I wanted to kind of theme my bullet journal to Disney. So I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse for the rest of this spread and we'll see you in the next one or you'll hear me in the next one, I guess. I don't know, just enjoy me making really crooked lines. Okay, so a couple things have happened in the editing world in the last like hour here at my house. I lost some footage, so that's why this one is already like halfway done. And then I realized, wait, I could totally just do the whole thing a little bit sped up rather than going back and forth. So anyways, this is my May goals and then my May favorites page. So at the top, I've got May goals. I'll fill that in later. I'll go back in and fill out my goals for May. The bottom, I have my favorites for books, TV, podcasts, and YouTube. Those are more of kind of what I'm reading and watching and consuming right now, just so I can kind of keep track and see when I started this book or started watching this TV show or when I was really into this YouTube channel. So that's kind of what that favorites and goals page is. On the right hand side is my YouTube tracker page. So I have at the top, I have the month of May and I actually forgot to write in the numbers, but I went back and did that later. Um, so I, uh, in that calendar, I fill out the days that I'm filming and the videos that are going out each Sunday so I can kind of plan out those dates. And then I just have video ideas and stats down at the bottom. My next few pages are my habits and my mood trackers. On the left hand side, I have my habit trackers. I draw out six May calendars, little tiny May calendars. They are one square per day, so they are seven by five boxes. I am currently outlining those calendars and then I will fill them in with the dates. So yes, I do fill in all six calendars with 31 dates. <laughs> And I actually didn't film all of it, so it'll jump here in a second to all of them already filled out. What I do with my habit trackers is I each calendar is a habit and I just realized I did not write the habits at the top of each calendar. <laughs> the habits I will I track on these are no fast food, working out, drinking water, reading, cleaning and getting ready for the day. I work from home, so having getting ready for the day as a 
habit that I need to track is pretty important for me. As I do each habit each day, I just put a little dot on the date for that habit and then it just fills out the calendars. And on the right hand side, I have my mood tracker. It's super simple. I just write mood up at the top as the title and then right below that I do a little sad face and then a few spaces over I do a happy face and in between those I fill out different colors. So I do five different colors for five different moods, ranging from a really terrible day to the best day ever. And sometimes I do have shapes down in the bottom part that I color in those colors, but this time I'm just going to do little Mickey head outlines in those colors. So my final spread is my weekly spread. I do eight boxes across two pages. The boxes are 16 spaces high and 10 spaces wide with two spaces in between each one and it fits across both pages perfectly. Don't ask how I figured it out. I think it was a lot of math a while ago. <laughs> but what I do is in that first box, because there's obviously only seven days in the week, I do my shopping list. So that is my grocery shopping list or whatever things we need as we think of it. I write it there in that first box for the week. And then throughout the rest of the week, I just do the day of the week and the day of the month up at the top. And then at the very top of the page, I just do a title for May 2nd through the 8th. And then I wanted to do a little example of what a box would look like. So I do a bullet point with the time and the meeting, and then I have a little to-do list at the bottom. And that is how I do my bullet journal for the month and the week. So this is just kind of a little flip through of what we just did with the super springy colors of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. And I actually love my little theme this month. I don't always do a theme, but I love this. Super cute. So that is that on my bullet journal. Um, and yes, it is a different day. <laughs> it is Saturday and I actually have to edit this now so this can come out tomorrow. But that is my bullet journal here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, I really enjoy watching bullet journal videos and I am no like artist <laughs> or anything in any way. So my bullet journals aren't nearly as beautiful as some of the others out there. Like I said, I will put those channels in the description down below so you can watch wonderful artists fill out their bullet journals. But this is just mine. It's simple. It's easy to use. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.